so hi all so welcome to join uh, our expo webinar to kick start um let me to have a simple introduction uh, of expo first so maybe some of you guys uh, don't know expo actually um expo is a uh, basically expert in doing the uh, data transformation, uh, data analytic, uh, BI analytic. So actually we connect a uh, people process and solution together. So um, to assist our clients. So basically uh, we partner with uh, Databrace, uh, AWS and Microsoft. So if you are interested uh, to doing some or you have some data project is coming, so feel free to contact us. So let's go straight to our topic. So um, actually today's topic is about uh, ESG, the sustainability and uh, ESG uh, getting transformative. So um, actually ESG is uh, one widely seen as a way on investing uh, sustainability where the uh, investment are made with the consideration uh, of the environment and uh, human well-being so as well as the economy so uh, in order to stay competitive uh, so some leaders some uh, leaders are supposed to um, want to leverage the ESG, ESG data to do some analytics so how to do it and how to bring value to your business so we are so total um, Sorry, please uh, kind of mute uh, and turn off your screen first. Yes, thank you. So uh, we are so welcome, uh, Patrick, sir, um, from the ESG and Green Finance uh, Education Foundation. So um, she is the professor. So we are welcome, Patrick, sir, to share uh, his insights uh, to you guys. So thanks, Patrick, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so nice to see you guys today. Uh, so let me start with um, how uh, we are going to do ESG analytics. So firstly, um, actually, I think everyone will know that ESG now that is yeah. so hot, right? Uh, okay, so let me continue. Uh, uh, so ESG now is so popular for all the company, uh, almost every company in Hong Kong. Uh, including listed company or non-listed company. Why? Because ESG become a hot topic. And then you know we are going to survive in the world in a green and sustainability world. So ESG actually is a big data project. So why I'm going to so say so, because you know in every company we, we operate in the uh, actual environment, we have a lot of so-called uh, uh, environmental, social, and governance data. Uh, so E stands for environmental. Social means we are going to do some uh, contribution to the society. And then the governance, of course, you need to do the management of your company. So in, in, in fact, uh, ESG is a kind of data science, social science, and all the business we put together. And then, you know, if you are working in a listed company every year, you need to submit the annual report. So after the annual report, you need to submit another uh, so-called compulsory disclosed report. We call the ESG report to uh, Hong Kong EX if you are the list company. So in 2020, uh, almost everyone, if you got direct connections with those company, uh, so for example, you are the vendor of uh, um, uh, Chiang Kong, for example, you supply materials for those listed company. And in 90, uh, in 2025, you need to compulsory disclose your uh, data to those listed company as well, with so-called a school free. So in that case, everyone need to do uh, know about ESG. Okay, so ESG report, uh, we need to consolidate all this with uh, data in your company and then we so called we are going to do a reporting uh, there are two standards actually later on you're going to submit a report so usually we 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 submit submit our report to hong kong ex uh, follow two standards one of them is called gli global report initiative and the other one is coming in 2025 compulsory we call tcfd OK, so this is other report standard. So we we write out our data, we consolidate them and write it at a report, and then we submit to the Hong Kong EX. So for example, if you are a listed company, uh, those 
uh, we call the benchmarking company, they were going to see your report and they give you some marks. So according to those uh, assessment, we will follow the so-called the United Nations SDG. So that means it's a kind of benchmarking. And then after you evaluate your benchmarking, your data, and then some uh, rating company, for example, Bloomberg, MC, MSCI, S&P, or even our local one, uh, Hansen Index, and a Hong Kong QAA. So they will give you rating. So if you got a rating very high, you can use those rating to do some investment and then call for some loan or some, uh, we call the green loan or green bond. And then let the fund manager to know about your company. So that you mean uh, now that you are ESG data in your company worth a lot of money. So if you, that means you keep your ESG data in a very good manner, in a very good, well-organized report. And then everyone will know that, oh, you are doing some great to the society so that your investment value of the company will become higher. Okay, so we're going to go for the next uh, slide. So ESG actually I have mentioned is a big data project. So everyone in your company, you need to take, in, uh, take part. And some people say, hey, this is none of my business because I'm doing a, just a, 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 a reception, okay? But no, from now on, everyone in the company, you need to contribute some kind of so-called ESG data, whether in environmental. So for example, you use paper, okay? You go for photocopier. So the, the data, uh, even down to a piece of paper is uh, some kind of environmental data. And even you work, uh, you work from home and then you go for a taxi or you go for some, some business trip, you need to report your carbon footprint as well. So that's why uh, ESG data is about everyone. And then everyone in the list of company every year, we need to take some kind of training. Uh, also, we, we need to take some voluntary job. So you, we kind of as a social. So for governance, so that means you are senior manager, they need to uh, do some governance. So the data governance is important now. Now we collect all almost everything in the company and then we put it in different category and then we have the result. And then we need to make sure this data are qualified in order to do a qualified report. Okay, so that means you need to do some data cleansing and you are going to have some kind of standard benchmarking uh, in the industry. So for example, you can't have any bias in your data. So you can make up the data from, uh, from, from, from something, okay? So that means we need to make sure from the very beginning, this data are, are real and then they are reflecting the operation of your company. And then you need to update frequently. And then later on, you need to think about how they are going to um, do some uh, risk assessment. So for example, how you're going to predict your data. So in that case, uh, machine learning AI, actually they will kick into there, okay? So let's go for the next slide. We are going to talk about uh, after you get all this kind of data, okay? So how you are going to prepare yourself and then report to your senior manager and tell other people in the world. Uh, for example, list the company, they must follow this restricted reporting standard. Uh, how about if I'm an NGO? So if you're an NGO, you need to prepare this kind of report as well. So later on, you know, every company in Hong Kong, if you're a listed company, uh, any report is a must thing. So ESG is another must thing. So that means you need to follow some guideline to report uh, in that. So I'm going to tell you that there will be a couple of uh, uh, report you need to follow. So for example, if you work a lot, your company is uh, doing some kind of um, uh, environmental, um, say for example, ocean, forest, um, day mining, or you are, have some coast in, in Australia or somewhere. So you need to uh, follow the CDP. So this is a kind of uh, a greenhouse emission. So if you are power supply stations, so you need to follow the power supply station. So you need to follow the, we call the uh, CDP. So for US company, they follow Dow Jones, okay? So um, how about Greenspy? So Greenspy is some, someone, they doing some kind of um, management in green building. So this is a uh, Europe standard, 
Okay, so if you do a lot of green building, you have some kind of say property management, so you need to follow the green speed. But most of the company in Hong Kong, I think 90% of the company, they will use so-called GRI. So it's global report initiative, we call it GRI. So that means from now on, many company, they are coming from different countries, right? For example, you are coming from USA, you have the second list thing in the NASDAQ. So for example, for Alibaba, so they listed in the NASDAQ, uh, they listed in the uh, Dow Jones. So ne they need to follow the so-called Dow Jones Sustainability Index report, or sometimes of, we call SABA. Okay, so that is the U.S. standard. But if I'm, I'm my company is working in China, so I, I don't need to follow SABA, of course, right? So in that case, I, I will go for a, um, a GRI. But in 2025, uh, we since that uh, GRI too put too much on environmental data, so we're going to change to TCFD. So TCFD is a data-driven uh, reporting standard uh, in 2025. So that means uh, about a few years later, a few years later, you need to prepare everything in data-driven. So that means that's why you need to prepare for something, uh, getting your data science really, okay? So that means how you're gonna do the data-driven. You need to define every task in your company and how you're going to deal with this task with some governance, uh, risk assessment, and then you, you need to forecast, is there any climate risk in this kind of data? So ultimately, every report will follow the TCFD standard. Okay, so let's go for the next slide. Uh, so this is the the, the layout so for GRI, and uh, now uh, followed by the Hong Kong EX. So you know Hong Kong Exchange, they they compulsory to need every listed company in in Hong Kong to follow the standard of so called KPI. Okay, so they are about a uh, fee area, environmental, social, and governance. So within this category, they individually have different kind of benchmarking and a KPI. So the total will be 36 uh, in this fee category. And then later on, you're going to subdivide into 52. So that means you want to follow the uh, reporting standard. You need to uh, disclose almost everything happening in your company. Okay, so this is what we call a global report initiative uh, standard. And then the next one, at the next slide, we're going to talk about uh, how we're going to do the data analytics. So firstly, uh, we need to follow so-called the uh, global report initiative standard, right? So there will be a different kind of category. So let's divide it into three parts. So if you are SME, you are non-listed company, uh, in that case, uh, you, you need to uh, submit some information, so-called a school fee emissions. So that means um, uh, you do some manufacturing, you are the supplier of a company, you are NGO, you are non-listed company. So you need to do the environmental part. Okay, so that means you collect those data from uh, uh, your electrical bill, uh, your paper, whatever you use in the company. So you save everything about environmental. So you you need to think that, oh, I collect this data. Later on, I need to contribute this data to the listed company if I'm the supplier. But how about listed company? So listed company, you need to take the social responsibility and then you need to do something uh, good to your employ employee, okay? So have uh, your training, your labor, almost everything in the company we call social category. And besides that, for listed company, they need to follow the more restricted one for the data governance, for the company governance. So that's why you can see how important our data are very, very important nowadays in all aspects for every company, okay? So we are going to see how we are going to collect this data. Yeah. Okay, next slide. Now, list the company, usually we start from the very beginning, we have uh, the, the so-called a team of, uh, uh, we call it a sustainability team. So I would suggest, if you are the listed company, remember you need to form a team to let uh, the team to start to evaluate the company from the top 
management. Okay, so the top level commitment and then the management, and then we set up the committee, and then we need to collect every aspect of the data of the company, including operations, social, and then environmental. Okay, so in in that case, we need to uh, engage our stakeholders. And then, of course, you need to fulfill the assessment from the Hong Kong EX if you're you a listed company. But how about if I'm a non-listed company? I just work for some SME. Then, yeah, you can you can go for those we call some goals on the ESG management because every company you need to sustain in the world, right? So you need to operate. Uh, 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 legally, you are going to sustain, you are going to protect the environment. So in that case, set up some goals on the ESG management and then staff, career, et cetera, et cetera. And then of course, in your company, you need to do some uh, training or some kind of, we call the uh, 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 practice is so that to make your company become more uh, sustainable. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is we introduce some system. Uh, next slide. Now, how you're going to collect this data? So that means that data is uh, already there. So according to the Hong Kong EX, they have a, a we call a, a table for you, right? So there will be KPI. Then we're going to collect it in Excel. You know, Hong Kong EX are giving you an Excel file. Oh, it's interesting. Uh, they will. They need you guys to do a report, but in a very, a uh, uh, very formatted way, so-called a GRI report. But it give you just, they just give you an Excel file. So what we are going to do, we can't uh, simply fill in the Excel file and return to Hong Kong EX. They don't, they don't accept. So that's why you need to change the Excel file into so-called some kind of data-driven report. Okay. So that's why you need to learn something how to do the a uh, very uh, uh, good reporting. Uh, so I would suggest you guys to learn something in, in Power BI or so-called Tableau. So, so this kind, we call the reporting tools. You, you can't type it in Microsoft Word, right? So in Microsoft Word, it does not make sense because they, they are not data-driven. So that's why uh, you can see that nowadays we are going to prepare everything in a very good way. So Excel is a must. And then later on, we're going to use Power BI, Tableau. And uh, today I found that we have another good uh, tools that is Databricks. So because we are going to prepare for the TCFD, so there will be uh, some forecasting and then risk assessment for the uh, Databricks uh, software. Okay, so next one. So how you're going to do this? So I will introduce uh, um, uh, uh, Explorer's expert, uh, Cheyenne. There, she is going to tell you how to do the whole things by using um, the services provided by Explorer. Okay, thank you, Cheyenne. Uh, it's your turn. Thank you, Sir Patrick, for such a, a wonderful and comprehensive introduction to ESG. Uh, I think everyone here in the audience already understands how important it is for companies to analyze this data. Uh, I will just briefly discuss uh, the, the work done here at Explora. So um, we developed, a, uh, we have an R&D project on ESG data analytics dashboard. Uh, just to give you a brief background of the project, um, Basically, what we are trying to do is we are uh, in the project. We are trying to compare the quantifiable KPIs uh, for different company ESG reports across several years. And uh, for the second part of the project, we are also doing some kind of topic analysis using some machine learning techniques uh, to identify the ESG focus of the company. So um, like uh, Sir Patrick already mentioned as well, uh, companies are actually providing the data to Hong Kong ex, uh, Stock Exchange, uh, HKX, in PDF format, uh, which is uh, definitely an unstructured data because uh, all companies, they're reporting in different page numbers, different uh, PDF format, uh, different uh, sizes. And uh, of course, uh, I mean, the, the PDF report of uh, also differs across different industries. So um, how can we actually find a way to extract this data? Uh, that is so unstructured, like it's just text. And um, of course, you need a human resource to, uh, it, you know, manually go through those reports. Uh, and that's quite a 
time consuming and cumbersome tasks. So uh, the solution proposed here by Explora, uh, what we are trying to do is we will locate the key ESG KPIs um, based on the ESG guide provided to us by uh, Hong Kong Stock Exchange and then uh, extract those relevant KPIs, the quantifiable KPIs from the company's annual ESG report. Uh, by quantifiable KPIs, I mean, um, you know, metrics that are hard numbers, that is like a quantity and not just text. So that part, that quantifiable KPIs will extract from the reports and uh, uh, metrics that are not actually quantifiable, that are not hard numbers, like just some text or policies or some description that the company is providing about their ESG initiatives. So for that part, we are leveraging the DataBix platform uh, and applying some natural language processing and machine learning to extract some topic uh, do some kind of topic analysis to identify what is the ESG uh, main ESG focus of a company in that particular year and finally once we get the uh, we are able to get the results from Databricks we visualize that uh, uh, insights into a power BI, power BI dashboard um, and of course the 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 benefit of having this kind of analytics dashboard is that we have a way to consolidate all the ESG information and then uh, we can actually view how the company performs um, in a, based on the data and not just by, you know, how good it looks. So, um, uh, Odilia, can you move to the next slide? Next slide, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, so this is the solution design, overall solution design. Um, so uh, the source, our source is a Hong Kong Stock Exchange website, uh, and then we have the uh, all the different companies' uh, data, ESG data. Uh, their annual PDF reports are actually uploaded on this public website. So we're getting the the URLs, the the links for these uh, PDF reports, and then we are saving them in a data lake storage solution. Uh, uh, the project we initially did was on the Microsoft platform, but of course this this applies. Uh, I mean, the solution is cross-platform, so uh, you can use any kind of data lake storage solution like Amazon S3 or Google Cloud Storage. Um, uh, you, you just need a way to uh, store that, save that information, that unstructured data in a data lake. So once we have those PDF URLs, we then manually extract the quantifiable KPIs, the uh, the the numbers, the hard uh, measures that can we can actually quantify and then uh, for the text analytics part we uh, do some uh, nlp topic analysis uh, using the databricks platform and we do some pre-processing and model training there so um, within the databricks platform uh, you can also query data so if you have an advanced esg data user you can actually do your own analysis within the databricks platform but uh, we are also um, we also extract that information and then save it back to the data lake and then uh, do some visualization on that uh, data in uh, uh, in Power BI or Tableau or any other data visualization tool. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, so this is. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, this is what the uh, dashboard will look like. So first we have a, a, a way to have a horizontal comparison of different companies across a, uh, an industry. So um, you can actually view uh, how the company, different companies compare uh, against each other in a particular year. So uh, we have actually hidden the company names due to uh, privacy reasons, but you can see from the dashboard that uh, you can see uh, different metrics, different quantifiable metrics like total greenhouse gas emission, total water consumption, the number of employees by the company. So you can you have a way to actually uh, visualize how the companies compare uh, in terms of these metrics. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Odilia, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, and also, um, you have a way to compare the uh, company with itself. So uh, you can see, based in this longitudinal comparison, how the company compares uh, the ESG in initiatives across different years. So uh, like in the first chart, you can see the total greenhouse gas emission shows a downward trend. So it means that the company is more fo focusing or, uh, you know, more uh, 
uh, ESG policies and trying to decrease its carbon footprints and greenhouse gas emissions. So those kind of things you can you have a way to visualize in the dashboard. Um, uh, next slide, please. Uh, and so for the topic analysis part, uh, which we are doing in Databricks, we then extract the ESG uh, from each of the ESG reports given by the company for a particular year. We extract the text and then we do some pre-processing. We break down the text into different sentences and each sentence is actually then passed to a machine learning model, a deep learning model uh, to get the uh, the topic, the ESG focus of that the uh, the topic for that sentence and then we we are able to get the uh, different predictions for different ESG uh, topics and subtopics. Can you move to the next slide please? Thank you. Odelia, next slide please. Thank you. So this is what the extracted data looks like. So we have the company, we uh, we have the sentence, the statement from that report for that particular year and then we have a sustainability category and then the subtopic and then we get a probability uh, result. So uh, that's how we get the results generated in Databricks. Uh, and then we are able to analyze the ESG, what was the main focus of that company in that particular year in terms of the ESG categories and ESG subtopics. Can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, and this is uh, what the visualization of the extracted result looks like. So for each company in a particular year, we can see that, uh, for example, for this uh, you, this uh, dashboard, we can see in 2020, the, the company's main focus for that particular year was uh, on its labor practices. And then uh, for each of the subcategories, each of the sustainability category, we can also see what was their main focus uh, for each of the you know main category like for product quality and safety its main uh, focus for on in that report was social capital for business ethics it's it was uh, its main focus was leadership and governance so these kind of metrics we are able to uh, ad find a way to visualize in the dashboard um, text that is just you know policies or initiatives but uh, in this brief overview we are able to see what was the main focus and the main uh, topic of uh, ESG topic focus for that company in that particular year. So uh, yeah, so this is just a brief introduction of what Explora has done and uh, how we can uh, leverage AI capabilities and uh, of uh, and uh, cloud platform to uh, provide uh, uh, ESG data analytics solutions. So I'll pass back to Odelia so she can take some live questions from the audience if they have any. So thank you so much for your time. So uh, thank you, Shayan and Patrick sure, uh, for sharing that uh, insightful uh, ESG webinar to us. So uh, so now it's the Q and A session. So uh, I just we just wonder if you have any question you want to ask Patrick and Shayan. So uh, if you want to ask, you just uh, type it in, in the chat box so that we can know about it. I, I we will give you around one or two minutes. Okay, so um, now I'm gonna to um, show the export offering here. So um, actually, so thank you, you guys uh, come to this webinar. So uh, um, for the offering, actually uh, the first one, we want to provide a free assessment workshop for you guys. So uh, actually export has done uh, more than uh, 50 assessment for our clients. So uh, we can assess the uh, BI analytic technology strategy and align with uh, the business strategy. So, um, so we the deliverable uh, will be the assets uh, to be process analyzed and a solution roadmap. So, uh, we hope through of this uh, workshop you can uh, solve uh, to find out what's problem in your data structure. So, uh, we do provide some strategic uh, architectural operation and implementation planning for you guys. So uh, for the second offering is the competitive uh, offshore resources. So actually Export has a team of uh, offshore resources allocating uh, amounts of Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Taiwan, 
Taiwan, and we also have office in Singapore. So, um, so our resources actually is quite skillful and high experience in uh, many data transformation projects. So analytic that management, um, maybe and yes, the analytic that governance and structure. So actually, um, um, as our resources is well trained with R and D mindset. So if you have uh, some project, uh like uh, really need people immediately. So uh, feel free to find us. Um, yeah, so uh, for the first one is the export token in a uh, data project. So uh, actually we have a uh, bundle of the uh, token for our clients to access the data as a uh, surface and inside as a surface. So uh, the minimum, minimum mandate is 20. So if you want to buy 100 mandate bundles, also can. So, um, so it is available for you to um, to uh, kickstart your data transformation model uh, with using this uh, export token. So, if this free uh, offering you are interested, so feel free to contact uh, ourselves. So, so actually, for the uh, upcoming year, we will have uh, Export Academy. So, uh, so basically. Um, uh, export group want to group the tech community and student together into a uh, export classroom training online and offline. So by getting data breaks certified uh, with uh, with uh, some official uh, material, but by data breaks, so, so you can uh, join our training and get the certification uh, uh, from data breaks as well. So. Uh, um, so what are the students? Uh, so we are uh, uh, we open this for the corporate class and also uh, the public uh, student as well. So um, so whether the student are new to the business intelligence or or you looking for uh, uh, maybe want to learn more data lake or or more skill set from that right? So uh, so you want to transform your skill uh, to be a machine learning or uh, data. Uh, engineering professional. Actually, we can help you here. So join our training. Uh, you can achieve uh, your goal. It, it might help your uh, career path uh, by getting the certification and badges from Dabrex training. So uh, now you can actually scan the QR code here. So actually, this QR code is a survey form. So uh, inside there's a question to ask if you are interested to join uh, the jo to join the Export Academy. So uh, when we group the content we might uh, have a whatsapp uh, community group so um so we of course we will ask your permission if uh if can we put your content in our group so we can uh, have a sharing uh if you have some data uh questions you also can type uh, there in that whatsapp group so um yes so this is our upcoming plan uh for next year so if you're interested to join, feel free to scan this QR code. So um, this is also the same form. So uh, is the same QR code. So feel free. I give you uh, some time to scan it. Yeah, maybe one or two minutes. OK, so uh, um, thank you for joining our webinar. So as what I said, if you're interested in uh, want to find us to do some data project or you interested in Export Academy about to get the data breaks uh, certification through our export training. So you can, uh, as well as said, you can fill that form and that we notice you are interested and you also can contact uh, us here. So um, I have uh, we have list uh, the email and uh, phone number for you guys. So yeah. So for the next webinar will be uh, on January or February. So uh, so.
please stay tuned our uh, LinkedIn channel and YouTube channel and Facebook channel so that uh, can be become our fans as well. So so thank you guys for uh, joining our this webinar. We hope uh, this ESG webinar uh, you learn a lot and gain a great takeaway. Thank you. Bye bye.